ओके हाउ आर यू स्टूडेंट्स टूडेज आर टॉपिक इज आई ए एस थर्टी थ्री अर्निंग पर शेयर द टॉपिक द नेम ऑफ द टॉपिक इज आई ए एस थर्टी थ्री अर्निंग पर शेयर राइट नाउ वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज अर्निंग पर शेयर मीन्स मीन्स हाउ मच कंपनी अर्न पर शेयर हाउ मच कंपनी अर्न पर शेयर नाउ सम स्टूडेंट सम स्टूडेंट कंफ्यूज बिटवीन ई पी एस मीन्स अर्निंग पर शेयर सी ई पी एस ई पी एस एंड डी पी एस लुक एट हेट देर इज वन वर्ड विच इज विच वी कॉल ई पी एस एंड देर इज अनदर वर्ड विच इज कॉल्ड डी पी एस डी पी एस स्टैंड फॉर डिविडेंट पर शेयर डी पी एस स्टैंड फॉर डिविडेंट पर शेयर नाउ लुक एट हेट अर्निंग पर शेयर मीन्स हाउ मच कंपनी अर्न पर शेयर एंड डी पी एस डिविडेंट पर शेयर मीन्स हाउ मच from out of those earnings out of those earning how much company has distributed how much dividend company has distributed wait for example eps of company is 10 eps of a company is 10 dollars per share and out of these 10 dollars out of these 10 dollars company has distributed 3 dollars out of these 10 dollars company has distributed dividend of 3 dollar that means company has retained Company has retained seven dollar per share. Seven dollar per share. So I repeat, there are two things. One is EPS, earning per share, and the other word is DPS, dividend per share. There is a big difference. Earning per share means how much company has earned per share, and dividend per share means how much company has distributed from that earnings. So for example, if the earning per share is ten dollars. and company has distributed company has distributed 3 dollars per share that means company has retained 7 dollar per share okay so now right now we are going to discuss eps earning per share now what's the importance of eps normally this is a very important performance indicator for shareholders or i say the share price of company is dependent on eps the share price of company is dependent on eps giving you example one example for example this is the share of ici and this is the share of unilever the eps of ici is 10 dollars per share and the eps of unilever eps of unilever is 100 dollars per share now just think this ici share is earning only 10 dollars per share and this unilever share is earning 100 dollars per share now you tell me which share is very valuable which share is more valuable this one this is earning more this company this share is earning more so it's very simple the higher the eps the higher the stock market price share price the higher the eps the higher the stock market price so in simple words we can say eps is sorry we can say market price stock market share price is dependent on eps share price is dependent on eps the higher the eps the higher the market price now just think as as the market price stock market price is dependent on eps that's why in past in past many directors many accountants were involved in the manipulation manipulation of eps so when these cases came out so finally international accounting standard board has decided to launch a proper accounting standard to launch a proper accounting standard on eps okay and the name of this is 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 33 ias 33 earning per share is 33 earning per share okay now let's start this standard now wait first of all i'm sure by now you must you all must have studied income statement okay this is a extract of income statement i hope you remember this pbit pbit is profit before interest and tax this pbit this pbit is not it is not at all the property of ordinary shareholder because from pbit we deduct interest expense from pbit we deduct interest expense that is finance cost so now we get pbt now we get pbt pbt means profit before tax 
from this profit before tax, we, we deduct tax expense. Obviously, we have to pay tax to government. So finally, we get profit after tax. Finally, we get profit after tax. And now, sometimes this profit after tax is also is also not the property of shareholders, ordinary shareholders. So from this profit after tax, we finally we have to take deduct less preference dividend, less preference dividend if any, preference dividend if any. Now listen, wait, wait, wait. Now after this, the profit we'll get is called profits attributable to ordinary shareholders. Profits attributable to ordinary shareholders. What do you mean by profits attributable to ordinary shareholder? Means this profit, this final profit only belongs to ordinary shareholders. Only ordinary shareholders are the owners of this profits. Why? Because see, PBIT means PBIT means we have already deducted all operating expenses. Now we have after PBIT we have deducted interest also and we have deducted tax. And sometimes, sometimes if there is any preference dividend, we have deducted that as well. So this is the profit. This is the profit. Whole soul belongs to whole soul belongs to ordinary shareholders. Now what we do? We put this profit. C C C C the formula of EPS, we put this, this profits attributable to ordinary shareholder in the numerator. What I have written, PAT, PAT means profit after tax, less preference dividend, divided by total number of issued ordinary shares, total number of issued ordinary shares. So that's how we get earning per shares, means how much profit company earned on one share, each share, on each ordinary share, on each ordinary share, okay? So this is the basic formula we have derived. EPS is equal to C, profit after tax. PAT means profit after tax, less preference dividend, if any, divided by total number of issued ordinary shares, okay? This is the formula of EPS. Now, for simplicity, for simplicity, in the whole next two, three classes, I will give you this, numerator ready-made. I will give you this numerator ready-made and I'll be using the word earnings. I'll be using the word earnings. Okay. For this numerator. So my dear students, whenever earnings in my question, whenever earnings is given, that means the ready-made numerator is given. If earning is given, that means the ready-made numerator is given. Okay. Right. In my questions. Now, now wait. So this is the formula. Now let's do one first, first very basic question. Easy, easy question. My dear student, this is, let us say, is your accounting period. 1st January, 2020. Right? Let us say, at the beginning of the year, where number of shares is 10,000. Very basic question. We are starting with very, very basic baby question. Number of and at the end of the year, number of shares is also 10,000. Okay, and you have earnings of 20,000, right? So, as a first question, I uh, we are not changing the number of shares. Let us say at the beginning of the year, the shares are 10,000, at the end of the year, the shares are 10,000, no change in the shares, and you have and you have earnings of 20,000. So let's calculate the EPS, EPS. What's the formula of EPS? Earnings divided by number of shares. So earnings is 20,000 and number of shares are 10,000 shares. So very simple, the answer is $2 per share. Answer is $2 per share, right? Okay, the answer is dollar two per share. Now, let's go to the real life. What happens in real life? 
real life these number of shares are not constant at all in real life these number of shares are not constant at all company issues new shares company may issue new shares during the year okay so there are different types of share issue which we have to study in this topic and they are very interesting so the first issue the first issue which we are going to study is number one is full market price issue full market price issue what do you mean by what do you mean by full market price issue what do you mean by full market price issue it means wait company needs cash for example company needs cash to 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 build a building to buy a non current asset anything and company has decided to issue new shares and to get the cash from the market so company has issued new shares in the market and company collected the market price the actual market price which is going on the full market price which is going on in the market so what what do you mean by full market price issue look at me company has issued new shares company has issued new shares and in return company in return company company got a bag full of cash company got a bag full of cash the full market price okay means company company is getting new resources from the market okay so keep in mind keep in mind one thing this full market price issue is not a free issue this full market price issue is not a free issue at all this full market price issue is not a free issue at all okay getting now let's do one question of full market price issue and i'll treat i'll teach you how to how to tackle this full market price issue and one more thing i'll i'll teach with a different style intentionally i'll solve it wrong i'll solve this question wrong so that you you keep and you try to understand the main issue with the with this full market price issue you try to understand you will try to identify the mistake and then i'll correct in front of you okay i'll we'll go in this way now you don't worry to you don't need to copy anything because i'll provide you the slides Okay. Right. Now, my dear student, we are doing a separate new question now. Okay, a separate new question. Now, you have your accounting period 1st of January 2020. to 31st december 2020 first of january 2020 to 31st december 2020 at the beginning of the year the number of shares issued were 10000 now open your eyes at the mid of the year company issued new 5000 see i have written full mp issue full mp mp means market price company issued new full market price issue of 5000 shares okay now that means from the mid of the year the total number of outstanding shares became 15000 shares okay at the beginning of the year it was 10000 and at the mid of the year company issued new new 5000 shares company issued new 5000 so 10 plus 5 is 15000 so at the end of the year the total number of shares issued are 15000 shares are 15000 shares okay now what are the earnings in this question look at the screen the earnings are earnings are 12500 earnings are $12,500 right okay so let's do it wrong first let's do it wrong uh what did i do i wrote 
EPS, look at here, EPS, simple, simple, simple. What is your earnings? 12,500 is the earning. It, it will go in the numerator. And what I did, I'll just pick these year end shares. I just pick these year end shares for the denominator, 15,000 shares. So if you divide 12,500, uh, divided by 15,000, it's, I think, around how much? 1.67 per share, I think. Still, you can do it. Still, you can try it. Wait. So, sorry, sorry. Make the earnings. Wait. Make the earning 20. I'm, I'm going to change the earnings. I'm going to change the earnings. 20, make the earning 25,000, okay? 25,000. Now do it. 25,000 divided by 15,000 is how much? It's 1.67, okay? Now, 1.67 per share. Now, if somebody does this question, this is total wrong. This is total wrong. Now, what's the logic? What's the logic? Now, listen, listen, listen. When we calculate EPS, we calculate it for the whole year. When we calculate, now listen very carefully. When we compute EPS, we compute it for the whole year, right? This is the complete year EPS. So what 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 is in our at the back of the mind that these are the total shares? These are the total shares outstanding for the whole year. These are our, this is our total investment. This is our total investment outstanding for the whole years, and this investment generates this much profit. In the denominator, we are writing the investment, the total investment, the total outstanding shares, and this total outstanding shares generated this much profit. So do you think, just listen, do you think that these 15,000 shares were outstanding throughout the whole year? Do you think these 15,000 shares were outstanding throughout the whole year? The answer is no, 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 see. First six months, see, first six months, only 10,000 shares were outstanding. And in the last six months, yes, 15,000 shares were outstanding. Yes or no? So this working is wrong. First logic, second logic. Just think, just think, look at me. This is a full market price issue. What, what's, the, what's the name of the issue? Full market price issue means, means at the mid of the year, just think, at the mid of the year, company issued new shares. At the mid of the year, company issued company issued new shares and company received a bag full of money. Company received a bag full of money. So this new bag full of money is invested, is invested from the mid of the year. This new bag full of money is invested from the mid of the year. So definitely this bag full of money helped us earning profits in last six months only in last six months only that means in the numerator that means in the numerator only last six months profit is included from that investment in the numerator only last six months profits has been included from that from this investment so when in the numerator only last six months effect is included so in the denominator in the denominator we'll also take the effect of last six months in the denominator, we'll also include the include the effect of these shares for just last six months. That's why we have to calculate a new thing that is weighted average number of shares. We have to include a new thing that is weighted average number of shares. I repeat the logic. Now listen, listen it again. Listen, just think these new shares we have issued at the mid of the year. And when we issued these new shares at the mid of the year, we received a bag full of money. And that new bag, that new bag full of money is invested from the mid of the year. So this bag has generated profits, profits just for the last six months. And those profits are included in this numerator. So in the numerator, only last six months profits are included. So when in the numerator, you have taken the effect of last six months. So definitely in the denominator, in the denominator, also you have to take the effect of last six months. Okay. So that's why you need to calculate weighted average number of shares, okay? And when we calculate, I'll, I'll, I'll calculate in front of you, don't worry. And when we compute weighted average number of shares, we'll include, we will include only last six months effects of these new shares, okay? Let's see how we do it, please.
weighted average w a means weighted average number of shade now it's very simple it's basic maths bracket open first of all in the first six months in the first six months how many shares were outstanding only 10,000 in the first six months how many shares were outstanding only 10,000 so 10,000 times 6 upon 12 see we have taken six months effect of these shares plus now we now we are here at the mid of the year see at the mid of the year we already had we already had issued 10,000 shares plus on the mid of the year we issued a new 5,000 shares so 10 plus 5, 10 already plus 5 new. 10 plus 5 is 15,000. So in the last six months, in the last six months, our outstanding shares are 15,000. Okay. So what how what we'll do? 15,000 times 6 upon 12. That's it. Come on. Now, what's the answer? I think this is. 12,500 shares. Yes, this is your weighted average number of shares. 12,500 shares. 12,500 shares. Okay. Now, let's calculate the EPS again for you. The formula of EPS is earnings. Earnings is how much? Earnings is 25,000. Okay. Divided by weighted average number of shares is 12,500 shares. So your EPS is dollar two per share. Okay, this is the correct treatment. So have a look, have a look. So whenever, now listen to the summary, whenever there is a, there is a full market price issue, whenever there is a full, full market price issue, we always compute weighted, weighted average number of shares. Whenever there is a full market price issue given in the question, we will always compute weighted average number of shares. We will always compute weighted average number of shares. Okay. And second thing, for full market price issue, for listen, very golden words, for full market price issue, the effect of full market price shares, the effect of full market price new shares are always, always taken from the date, from the date that share issue has been done. And in this question, these new shares are issued at the mid of the year. So we have taken the effect. We have taken the effect of these new shares from the mid of the year, from the mid of the year. Okay. And why, what's the logic? Now I'm giving you logic again. Why full market price issues, uh, full market price shares are included from the date they are issued? Because it's, it's not a free issue. It's not a free issue. It's, it's, it's issue of resources it's issue in exchange of resources we receive a bag full of money we receive a bag full of money and that bag full of money is invested from that date and that bag full of money is invested from that date so that that bag gives us earning for only few months only few months so that's why in the numerator we have taken few months profit so in the denominator we will also take few months shares that's it that's it did you understand students? Did you understand? There is a question. What if it is at the start of the year? Yes. If the full market price issue on the first day, then we will take the full year effect. Yes. Okay. Now let's do a very very small practice just now we have to calculate weighted average number of shares a small practice let's do it
okay so this is your this is the accounting period open your eyes first january 2020 to 31st december 2020 right and now at the beginning of the year the number of shares were 8000 shares and there are two full market price issue in this one year okay for on first april 2020 there is a first full market price issue of 3000 shares on first november 2020 there is a second full market price issue of 2000 shares okay so now i invite you all to calculate weighted average number of shares come on do it it's basic maths you have two minutes quick Come on, do it. Have a look. Eight thousand shares. See, first three months. First three months, the outstanding shares are eight thousand, and eight plus three is from this date eleven thousand shares. Next April to first first April to first November is seven months. Next seven months, the outstanding shares are eleven thousand. Now look at here. Then finally, eleven plus two. Is thirteen thousand? Wait, thirteen thousand, and these thirteen thousand shares are outstanding for only two months. Okay, so let me do it. Let me do it very easy. First eight thousand shares. The outstanding time is three upon twelve plus eleven thousand times how much? Seven upon twelve. Plus thirteen thousand. From this date, the shares become thirteen thousand. And how many these thirteen thousand shares are outstanding for last two months? Times two upon twelve. Okay. So tell me the tell me the answer, please. Tell me the answer. Final answer. What's the final answer, please? One zero five eight four. Okay, so that's how you calculate the weighted average number of shares. That's how you calculate the weighted average number of shares. That's how you calculate the weighted average number of shares. <clears throat> okay, so now let's to cut the story short. Final summary. Whenever you see a full market price issue in the question, you need to calculate weighted average number of shares. The first thing. Number two, full market price shares are always, always, always included, are always included from the date it is actually issued. Okay. From the date it is actually issued. And what's the logic? Because full market price issue is not a free issue. Full market price issue is not a free issue. It's issue with resources, with cash. We receive a new bag full of cash and that bag full of cash is invested, is invested from the date the shares are issued. So definitely these new shares gives us earnings for few months. That's why in the numerator only few months profit is included. That's why in the denominator also we will include only few months profit. We will include only few months profit, right? Got it. Now, now, 
now we are going to do the second issue the second issue is bonus issue please the second issue is called bonus issue now before we move on i i would like to show something very interesting something very different related to bonus issue okay we are stopping eps right now and we are learning something new listen we all know what is bonus issue for example company does not have cash to pay cash dividends okay so company gave free shares to existing shareholder company distributed free shares free free shares to existing shareholder this is bonus issue okay now wait hope you remember the formula of eps hope you remember the formula of eps eps i just taught you the basic formula of eps in the numerator you write profits in the denominator you write shares the basic formula i would like to write basic basic formula profits divided by shares profits divided by shares profits divided by shares okay so now just think look at me just now assume assume a bonus issue think about a bonus issue in the mind what is bonus issue company issued new shares company issued new shares so when company issued new shares your denominator will go up when company issues new shares the denominator goes up the denominator goes up okay and now the bonus issue is a free issue not a single penny not a single penny company received not a single penny company received from this bonus issue so see there is no change in profits not, not a single new amount will be invested not a single new amount will be invested so no change in numerator but the denominator will go up so this will definitely reduce your eps whenever whenever any company do bonus issue eps goes down just think whenever any company issues bonus shares eps goes down see because bonus issue will only increase increase the denominator bonus issue will only increase the denominator bonus issue won't change your numerator won't change your profits won't increase your profits because nothing is coming no new investment is coming from shareholders just think okay now it is said just listen it is said that in stable markets in stable markets normally shareholders don't like bonus issue in stable markets like uh, like foreign markets us market or the markets which are very stable the markets which actually follows the eps the market where political conditions are stable where all the other economical factors are stable and the share price purely follows eps share price purely follows eps in such market shareholders shareholders do not like bonus issue now giving you one example now be very careful it's extra learning for you guys let us say now be very active it's very interesting honestly it's very interesting listen there is a company the name of the company is a company a how do calculates eps like this they have earnings of $1000 their earnings are $1000 and they have only issued 100 shares in total 
to date to date they have only issued 100 shares so 1000 divided by 100 makes dollar 10 per share eps okay dollar per 10 per share is the eps of this company okay and with this eps open your eyes with this eps the market price is equal to 20 per share in the stock market the market price is 20 per share when the eps was 10 dollars the stock was trading in the market the stock was trading in the market at 20 dollars per share okay this is the existing condition of this company now open your eyes how many how many shares how many shares company has issued 100 shares total 100 shares okay total 100 shares and now out of these 100 shares 10 shares 10 shares are owned by mr x mr x it's he is a shareholder mr x he is a shareholder of this company and out of these 100 shares mr x own 10 shares mr x own 10 shares 10 shares okay so now can you tell me right now mr x wealth before bonus issue there is no no bonus issue by the company 10 shares mr x own 10 shares and what is the share price right now 20 pounds the share price is 20 pounds so 10 shares multiplied by 20 the wealth is 200 the wealth is 200 dollars i have written pounds let me change it dollars the wealth is 200 dollars okay so right now there is no bonus issue forget about bonus issue come miss company's eps is 10 and at this eps the market price per share is 20 dollars at this eps the market price per share is 20 dollars right so mr x owns mr x owns 10 shares of this company and 10 shares multiply by the share price per share is 20 dollars 10 shares multiply by 20 dollars the wealth right now is 200 dollars have a look have a look relax have a look Now, now, my dear student, let us say this company decided to make 100% bonus issue, 100% bonus issue. You know what is 100% bonus issue? Means whatever shares are, whatever shares company has already issued, company will issue the same number of shares company will distribute the same number of three shares okay 100 percent in past in the basic level you have issued 10 percent 20 percent bonus issue now this is 100 percent bonus issue now let's see what is the eps after this 100 percent bonus issue we all know that bonus issue is a free issue bonus issue is a free issue so no new resources no new resources so the numerator the profit will remain same the profit will remain same but as company has issued the equal number of new shares so 100% bonus issue so the denominator will get double the denominator will get double so 100 shares plus 100 shares makes 200 shares okay 200 shares company has issued same number of new shares to each and every shareholder so now what's the effect on eps open your eyes 1000 numerator remains same but denominator gets doubled so EPS will be dollar five per share. EPS will be dollar five per share. EPS will be dollar five per share. Okay. Now I have already told you in the beginning of this question that we are in the stable market right now. Assuming we are in the stable market, so market price will follow the EPS. Market price will follow the EPS. So as open your eyes, as the EPS became half, as the EPS became half. So market price will also became half. Market price will also became half. So existing price was $20 and now it became $10 per share. Okay. Now a very interesting thing is coming. Very, very interesting thing is coming. Look at here, look at here. Mr. X wealth after 100% bonus issue. Mr. X wealth after 100% bonus issue. See. Already Mr. X had 10 shares. Already Mr. X had 10 shares, but now after 100% bonus issue, after 100% bonus issue, Mr. X will receive the same number of new shares. 
he had 10 shares now he will receive 10 shares more so now his shares became 20 shares now his number of shares became 20 shares but 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 what's the share price now what's the share price now what's the market price market price is now dollar 10 per share so can you calculate the wealth 20 into 10 again 200 dollars again 200 dollars look at the fact look at the fact see before bonus issue before bonus issue the wealth was 200 dollars before bonus issue the wealth was 200 dollars and after bonus issue the wealth again was 200 dollars no change in the wealth of shareholders look at with your open eyes the existing wealth was 200 dollars and now the new wealth is also 200 dollars the new wealth is also 200 dollars so no change in shareholder wealth so why will they like it why will they like it no change in shareholders wealth just imagine and you know what happened oh, just look at the economic reality of this transaction see just the number of shares gets doubled just the number of shares get doubled and the share price became half see just the number of shares gets doubled and the shares price remains gets half so no extra benefit even sometimes frankly speaking sometimes i when i teach kids and i give these examples to beginners i what what i say i say this listen just assume shareholder is a cute little kid shareholder is a cute little kid and shareholder was holding $10 note shareholder had $10 note so what company did company said come here come here and company said give me your $10 give me your $10 note and in return company has given two five five dollars note in return company has given two five five dollar note and this shareholder is saying oh two 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 so this is that that's not a benefit just com what company has done company has converted his ten dollar note into two five dollars note <laughs> company has converted his ten dollars note into two five dollars not nothing else the wealth is remain is same so now what's the central idea what's this now this is these these are the golden words which i'm going to say theoretically listen theoretically because of this bonus issue shareholders won't get any benefit or any loss see the wealth is same wealth is not increasing neither increasing nor decreasing it's same so that means no benefit or no loss to shareholder because of this policy see the wealth remains same so sh there is no extra benefit or no extra loss to shareholders listen carefully have a look have a look okay now now again we are coming back to the eps it's very easy i hope you don't forget i hope you don't forget the full market price issue thing i hope i expect now Now, let us say this is accounting period, 1st January to 31st December, very basic question. Number of shares at the beginning of the year is 10,000, okay? And for example, on 1st of August 2020, 
company made a one for ten one for ten one for ten bonus issue wait company made a one for ten bonus issue now let us say the earnings here is dollar twenty two thousand okay now the examiner is asking to calculate eps eps very basic eps see how do we how we do it the formula of eps is earnings divided by shares so earnings is twenty two thousand and now listen my words very carefully listen my words very carefully just think over it is this is a full market price issue or a bonus issue is this a full market price issue or bonus issue the answer is bonus if this were a full market price issue then obviously then obviously i agree i will be computing weighted average number of shares i will be computing weighted average number of shares and in that case in that case it will only be included in that case it will be only included from the date from the date the new shares are issued if this were a full market price issue then but as it's a bonus issue it's a free issue free free its objective is to create dilution it de decreases your eps so always always remember that bonus issue are adjusted from the beginning of the year bonus issue are always adjusted from the beginning of the year bonus issue are are always adjusted from the beginning of the year okay so how we do it 10000 are the beginning shares and this is 1 for 10 1 for 10 means 10% 1 For ten, one upon ten, one upon ten into hundred is ten percent. So that means you are issuing new ten percent shares. You are issuing new ten percent shares. So ten thousand increased by ten percent is eleven thousand shares. So in the denominator we'll write that's it. That's it. Let's write one easy line. Bonus. now so my dear student if whenever somebody told you to calculate eps and there is a bonus issue in the question simply adjust from the beginning of the year and why just think over it because this is not full market price issue if this was a full market price issue if this was a full market price issue then yes then yes then yes you take it you take it from the from that date when the shares are issued as this is a bonus issue free issue free free so its objective is to create dilution its objective is to decrease the eps so you simply adjust from the beginning of the year okay now one basic maths basic maths thing not difficult at all go very slow whenever you find listen to me when ever you find a bonus issue in the question we adjust it from the beginning of the year that's done but we do it through bonus fraction we adjust bonus shares from the beginning of the year through bonus fraction a new thing bonus fraction now how do we calculate this bonus fraction very basic maths listen just assume just think at the beginning of the year the total number of shares were 100% the existing total is always 100% at the beginning of the year we were at 100% shares okay 100% now we made a new issue of 1 for 10 we made a new bonus issue of 1 for 10 1 for 10 means 10% 1 for 10 means 
that means we issued new 10% shares that means we issued new new 10% shares so 100% plus 10% so 100% plus 10% this makes 110% 110% okay i repeat existing number of shares were 100% we issued new 10% shares so 100 plus 10 is 110% now now wait if you remove this percentage sign we divide it by 100 we divide it by 100 now let's do cancellation this zero and zero will be cancelled so 11 upon 10 is your bonus fraction in short we call it bf in short we call it bf bonus fraction okay in short we call it bf now what we do listen 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 look at here look at here What's the formula of EPS earnings divided by number of shares earnings divided by number of shares wait just write the number of shares just write the number of shares at the beginning of the year just write the number of shares at the beginning of the year and multiply it by bonus fraction you will get the same answer do it so 10,000 shares times 11 upon 10 10,000 shares times 11 upon 10 is 11,000 and now you do it the answer will be same now i know i know what you guys are thinking sir you just wasted the time sir you just wasted the time the answer was same the existing working working was easier than this current working yes apparently right now it's it looks like this but as we have to take other classes many classes as well after today's class this will be the only method we have to follow this bonus fraction thing because some few things are hidden from you right now okay few things are are secrets right now so whenever let me summarize it whenever you find a bonus issue in the question how we how you adjust it you always adjust you always adjust bonus shares from the beginning of the year you always adjust bonus shares from the beginning of the year and you adjust it through bonus fraction. You adjust it through bonus fraction, okay? And that's how you do bonus fraction working. Okay, now I'm going to give you basic maths practice. I'm giving you different bonus issue and you have to calculate bonus fraction quick. Listen, listen, this time it was one for 10. That's why 10%. That's why I added 10%. Okay, that's why I added 10%. If it is one for five, if this is one for five, then one upon five means 20%. If this is two for five, then two upon five means 40%. Okay, so you have to adjust accordingly. I hope you are, you guys are no more kids. Let me give you a few questions, okay? Now this is one for five. This is two for five. This is three for five. One for three, this is one for, or make it one for four. Come on, do it. I need bonus fraction for all these four. I need bonus fraction for all these four. Come on, do it, do it, do it.
ओके लेट्स लेट मी डू इट लेट मी डू इट इट्स वेरी इजी लिसन वन फॉर फाइव मीन्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वन फॉर फाइव मीन्स ट्वेंटी परसेंट हाउ यू गेट कैल ट्वेंटी परसेंट वन अपॉन फाइव इंटू हंड्रेड इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट ओके लेट स्टार्ट एग्जिस्टिंग टोटल इज ऑलवेज हंड्रेड परसेंट फॉर एनी क्वेश्चन द एक्सिस्टिंग नंबर ऑफ शेयर टोटल आर हंड्रेड परसेंट एंड एज दिस इज वन फॉर फाइव सो इट्स ट्वेंटी परसेंट सो हंड्रेड प्लस ट्वेंटी इज वन ट्वेंटी परसेंट ओके एंड वेन यू रिमूव दिस परसेंटेज फाइन यू डिवाइडेड बाई हंड्रेड नाउ I hope you remember the timetable of two. So simply wait. This zero zero cut and this two times five and two times six. So answer is six upon five. The bonus fraction is six upon five. Very simple. So this is all BF. Six divided by five. For one for five, the bonus fraction is six upon five. Okay. Now let me do for two up two for five. Now wait. Existing total for anything is hundred percent, and two upon two for five means forty percent. Two for five means forty percent. Two for five. What do you mean by two for five? That shareholder for every five shares they will receive two more shares. For every five shares they will receive two more shares. So hundred plus forty is one forty percent, and if you remove this percentage sign, you will divide it by hundred. Now, cancel zero zero, and you hope you remember the timetable of two, two times five, two times seven, so it's seven upon five. One more, three four five. Okay. Existing total was hundred percent, and three four five, three four five, three upon five into hundred is sixty percent. So you issued new sixty percent shares. This is one sixty percent, and when you remove percentage sign, you divide by hundred. Now cancel zero and zero. Two times five, two times eight, eight upon five. Easy peasy. <laughs> Now. One for four, one for four, one for four is twenty-five percent. One twenty-five percent divided by hundred. Come on, cancel it. Five upon four. Okay, I hope you got it. So now it should not be a challenging task for you. So let's summarize again. We just studied two issues. One is full market price issue. and the second one is bonus issue the first is full market price issue and the second one is bonus issue okay what we do in full market price issue whenever you see whenever you see any full market price issue in the question you calculate weighted average number of shares already done and whenever you see a bonus issue you simply adjust the bonus shares from the beginning of the year from the beginning of the year okay and we do it through bonus fraction we do it through bonus fraction okay right now we are going to do the most interesting and the most logical thing of this class now this is a big concept which i am going to give you
Okay, my dear students, before we start this question, before we start this question, first of all, first of all, listen to me very carefully. Just let's agree on few things, one or two things. The first thing is for a common shareholder, for a common man, for a common shareholder, investor, EPS is everything. For a common shareholder, EPS is the most important thing. Means if a common shareholder sees EPS going up, he becomes happy, he becomes happy. And when the common man sees EPS going down, he starts selling the shares, he starts dumping the shares. Okay. So for the common shareholder, EPS is everything. Number one. Number two. Each and every shareholder is not a chartered accountant qualified. A common man also invests, engineers, doctors, a normal businessman also invests in the stock market, also buys shares. So each and every shareholder is not a chartered accountant. And in your basic studies, I'm talking about basic financial accounting studied, you have studied the qualitative characteristic of framework. You have studied the qualitative characteristic of framework understandability. I hope you have studied understandability. Understandability means understandability means when an accountant prepares, when an accountant prepares a financial statement, it should be that much understandable. It should be that much understandable that a common that a common man with some knowledge, with some knowledge of accounting and business can easily understand, can understand. Okay. So that means it should not be that much difficult. It should not be that much difficult that only chartered accountant understands this financial statement. Okay. This is what understandability is. This is what understandability is. Right. So for a common shareholder, EPS is everything. Number two, all shareholders are not chartered accountant. And we have to prepare financial statement for a common shareholder, for a common shareholder. And number three, I told you through that example, through that special example, that because of bonus issue shareholders, shareholders, existing shareholders do not get a single pound benefit or single pound loss. The wealth remains same. Wealth remains same, 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 same. Okay. Right. Let's start the question. It's very easy. First of all, this is the first year. This is the first year. This is the first year. First of January 2020 to 31st December 2020. First of January 2020 to 31st December 2020. Okay. Your EPS. Listen, as there are no new shares in the first year, there are no new shares. At the beginning of the year, the number of shares were 10,000. At the end of the year, it is also 10,000. At the beginning of the year, the number of shares are 10,000. At the end of the year, the number of shares are again 10,000. Okay. So if the formula of EPS is earnings is 20,000, earnings is 20,000. Okay. And number of shares are 10,000 shares. It's very easy. Dollar two per share. Dollar two per share. And now at the end of the year, this EPS will be calculated and the financial statement will go to the shareholders home. They will see the EPS. That's the end. The first year is done. The first year is done very easily, very easily. Now, second year. Now see, this is the second year. Open your eyes. Second year. Please, please study with heart, please. In the second year, there is a bonus issue of one for five. I hope you can see there is a bonus issue of one for five. Now we all know as there is a bonus issue in the second year. So bonus shares are always adjusted from the beginning of the year. Bonus shares are already always adjusted from the beginning of the year. So we will adjust these bonus shares right from the beginning. We will adjust these bonus shares right from the beginning. And now you can you tell me the bonus fraction? We, we, we adjust the bonus shares from the beginning of the year. 
and we do it through we do it through bonus fraction and i just taught you the bonus fraction of 1 for 5 look at here the bonus fraction for 1 for 5 is 6 upon 5 the bonus fraction for 1 for 5 1 for 5 means 20% see this working all of you please see this working it's 6 upon 5 so now how i'm going to do it eps is equal to earnings now what are the beginning number of shares 10000 shares times 6 upon 5 okay can you tell me the answer the answer is i think 1.67 Yes. Now I'm going to discuss some comments, some comments, please listen to me very carefully. I hope by this time, by this time, you guys are no more kids. You know this fact that whenever, whenever company issues a financial statement of one year, Whenever company issues financial statement of one year, company also gives comparative numbers of last year. Company also gives comparative numbers of last year so that shareholder can compare the performance. So that shareholder can compare the performance. Shareholder can compare the performance. Now, let's again, let's do it wrong. Let's do it wrong. Now, what happened? Wait. At 30, see this. At 31st December 2021, company issued the, company issued the financial statement of company issued the financial statement of 31st December 2021 and company reported this EPS company reported this EPS company reported this EPS in 31st December 2021 and with the comparative in the comparative company reported this dollar two per share in the comparative company reported dollar two per share in the same financial statement look at here 1.67 for 2021 1.67 for 2021 and dollar two per share for 2020. Now, just think what shareholder will see, what a common shareholder will see. They will see last year the EPS was $2 and now it's only 1.67. So shareholder will see that EPS is going down. So they will perceive that the performance is going down eps going down means the performance is going down and they will start selling the shares they will start selling the shares there will be a panic in the market but just think do you think it's a real real downfall of the company just think this that this decrease in eps is because of the decrease in performance no the performance is same just think just see let me give you evidence last year earning was also 20000 see this Last year earning was 20,000 and this year earning is also 20,000. This year earning is also 20,000. So the look at the at the my video. The performance was same. The performance was going smooth, smooth, not going up, not going down. Earnings were same. Last year earnings was 20,000. This year earnings was also 20,000. So there is no defect in the performance of company. It's same. It's same. But if you see the EPS, if you see the EPS, the EPS number has gone down. Why? Just because of bonus issue. Just because of bonus issue, this thing is coming. Thus, because of bonus issue, this thing is coming. And now just, just recall that example, which I taught you. Because of bonus issue, when EPS goes down, so market price also goes down, yes. But shareholder has received extra shares. But shareholders are also receiving extra shares. So there is no loss. So there is no loss. There is no harm in bonus issue. There is no good or no harm in bonus issue. So if you if you show this last year dollar two EPS to shareholders, they will assume that the performance has gone down. See, to two with one point six seven, this will misguide the shareholder. They may perceive it. They may perceive it as if the performance is going down, but in reality the performance has not gone down. In reality the performance has not gone down the performance is intact it's straight so 
now we need to now we need to we need to take the effect of bonus issue in the last year as well we need to take the effect of bonus issue in the last year f as well as well to do comparison like with like to do comparison like with like otherwise my dear student shareholders will be misguided they will think they will think that performance has gone down because i told you for a no normal common shareholder eps is everything for a common normal shareholder eps is everything when eps goes down they think that company is going down and they started selling the shares but in reality the company has not gone down so we need to correct this defect we need to correct this defect how L look at here look at here so now whenever listen my words whenever there is a bonus issue in any accounting period whenever there is a bonus issue in any accounting period so so when you issue comparative figures when you issue comparative figures of that financial statement of last year you will also take the effect of bonus issue in last year as well you will also take the effect of bonus issue in last year as well how see eps its earnings is 20000 and last year shares are 10000 and how are we going to take how are we going to take the effect of bonus through bonus fraction c right bonus fraction 6 upon 5 can you calculate now it's 1.67 per share now see that means when when at 2021 at the end of 2021 when we'll issue the financial statement of 2021 we'll report the eps of 2021 as 1.67 with the comparative eps of last year is as 1.67 also so now the shareholder will not be misguided see the performance is same the performance is same so the eps is also same and you know there is no loss to shareholders shareholder has not paid any loss no loss on shareholder my dear no loss on shareholder we already discussed it with logic with clear logic we have discussed it okay so keep this summary in your mind let me call you let me tell you the summary keep this summary in the mind that whenever whenever in any accounting period if there is a bonus issue whenever in any accounting period if there is a bonus issue so while issuing the financial statement and while 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 reporting the comparative eps of last year while reporting the comparative eps of last year we'll restate word listen my word we'll restate the this eps this is called see this is called restated eps this is called restated eps okay and we'll take the effect of bonus in that last year financial statement as well why to make comparison like with like and listen if we won't do this so the shareholder will be misguided the shareholder will be misguided now wait one interesting thing one student raised the hand one one new student raised the hand he said sir 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 i said what 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 sir this work is very difficult let's don't do this restated work let's just let's just report this thing let's just report this dollar 2 last year and this year 1.67 and write in the notes to the account that write in the notes to the account that because of bonus issue that this eps went down this eps went down because of bonus issue just write in the in the notes and shareholder will do these working themselves shareholder will do the these workings themselves so you know what i replied to that student i said all shareholders are not chartered accountants i earlier earlier i told you earlier i told you all shareholders are not chartered accountants so so you have to you have to you have to break it down for shareholders you have to prepare food for shareholders so that they can eat easily you have to do spoon feeding to shareholders got it got it have a look have a look giving you one minute have a look take your time take your time
now one very basic max i hope you all studied in schools grade 6 grade 7 thing very basic maths i'm i'm going to tell you basic maths wait do you know this fact do you know this fact that if in the denominator it is written 6 upon 5 like look at me do you know this fact that if in the denominator it is written 6 upon 5 and if you take it in the numerator if you take the same number in the numerator it becomes upside down we call it reciprocal reciprocal for example in the denominator it if it is written 6 upon 5 when you bring it to numerator it becomes 5 upon 6 it becomes 5 upon 6 okay so now wait look at the look at the screen look at the screen see look at the restated eps in the denominator we have written 6 upon 5 so if we bring if we bring the 6 upon 5 in the numerator if we bring the 6 upon 5 in the numerator what what we'll do this 6 upon 5 will become will become will become look at here 5 upon 6 this 6 upon 5 will become 5 upon 6 okay okay now wait wait what is left here here you have 20000 divided by 10000 here you have 20000 divided by 10000 which is the existing eps which is the existing eps yes or no so now there is one more formula simply write the existing eps simply write the existing eps and multiply it with the reciprocal of bonus fraction multiply it with the reciprocal of bonus fraction you will get the ready made restated eps that said see this i repeat just simply write the last year eps simply write the last year eps and multiply it by the reciprocal of bonus fraction multiply it by the reciprocal of bonus fraction you will get it let me tell you the ready made formula my dear boys and girls let me tell you the ready made formula for this see this okay so the ready made from now onwards from now onwards giving you a ready made formula for restated eps what is this last year eps multiply by 1 upon bf 1 upon bf means reciprocal of bonus fraction that's it ready made thing and you know in future questions you will only be able to use this formula nothing else because last year data will won't be given to you last year data won't be given to you so you have to do it like this so you have to do do it like this last year eps into 1 upon bonus fraction last year eps into 1 upon bonus fraction okay got it got it dear student have a look have a look have a look take your time take your time did you understand okay now let's move to one last question let moves to one last question of practice question of today's class now wait this whole question i taught you just to explain the concept just to explain the concept and from now onwards we'll follow this we'll follow this but you know 
in real life the earnings will change in this question just to explain you the concept concept i maintain the earnings constant i maintain the earnings constant but in there in the real life the sales cost of sales and everything gets changed every year so in from next question we'll we'll discuss the real life thing there will be changes in earnings but still whenever whenever there is a bonus issue still whenever there is a bonus issue in any accounting period we will do we'll we'll restate the last year eps like this okay now i'm giving you one question you have to do it on your own Okay, so now you have earnings in the first year. The earnings is fifty thousand dollars. In the second year, let us say earnings is sixty thousand dollars. Okay, so what you have to do? Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very very carefully. First of all, you have to solve the first accounting period normal EPS. Then you have to work out the second accounting period EPS, and then you have to calculate the last year restated EPS. Okay. Now, let me explain you. At the beginning of first year, the number of shares issued were twenty thousand. At the beginning of the first year, the number of shares issued were twenty thousand. On first of October, twenty twenty, you issued a full MP, full MP, full MP. I hope you remember full MP issue of five thousand shares. So, and at the end of the year, so number of shares are twenty five thousand. In the next accounting period, you did a two for five, two for five, two for five bonus issue. Come on, let's do it. In the first year, the earnings is fifty thousand. Second year earnings is sixty thousand. Work out both EPS plus restated EPS as well.
do it do it come on come on boys do it Listen, 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 listen. In the first year, there is a full market price issue. So I already told you, whenever there is a full market price issue, we always compute weighted average number of shares. Very easy. One thing. Second thing, and full market price issue are always included from the date they are issued. From the date they are issued. Okay. So now, in the from first January to first October, the first nine months. So the first nine months, the outstanding shares are twenty thousand, and then we should new five thousand. So twenty plus five is twenty-five. So in the last three months, in the last three months, twenty-five thousand shares are outstanding. In the last three months, twenty-five thousand shares are outstanding. So how we are going to do it? Look at here, twenty thousand times nine upon twelve plus. Twenty-five thousand times three upon twelve. What's the answer? Can you tell me? What's the weighted average number of shares? Two one two five zero. It's two one two five zero shares. Okay. Now the EPS will be very simple. It's earnings. Earnings. What's the earnings? Earnings is fifty thousand. Fifty thousand divided by two one two five zero shares. So this will be this will be I think two point three five. Okay. Have a look. This is your current year EPS. This is your current year EPS. Okay. So we'll calculate this and we'll send this to shareholders. Very simple. Now, what will happen in the second year? In the second year, in the second year, there is a bonus issue. In the second year, there is a bonus issue of two for five, two for five, two for five is forty percent. Two for five is forty percent. So first of all, with forty percent, the bonus fraction I already taught you is seven upon five. B F bonus fraction is seven upon five. I've already taught you. Okay. So how we'll do it? The earnings are sixty thousand dollars. The earnings are sixty thousand dollars. Okay, and bonus shares I already taught you are always adjusted from the beginning of the year. Bonus shares are always adjusted from the beginning of the year, and they are adjusted through bonus fraction. Okay, so at the beginning of the year you have twenty five thousand shares times seven upon five. Come on, what is the EPS now? It's one point seven one. Okay, this is the second year EPS, one point seven one per share. Now the one last thing. Now one last thing. One last thing. Listen. Whenever in any accounting period, whenever in any accounting period there is a bonus issue, and when you report the comparative EPS of last year, you restate it. You restate it, right? You take the impact of bonus issue in that. So. How we are going to calculate the restated EPS? I already taught you. The restated EPS will be simple. 
last year eps write down the last year eps 2.35 last year eps multiply by the reciprocal of bonus fraction multiply by the reciprocal of bonus fraction so normal bonus fraction in this question is 7 upon 5 normal bonus fraction in this question is 7 upon 5 so the reciprocal will be 5 upon 7 5 upon 7 so it is 1.67 per share okay so that's the end of the story that's the end of the story that when in the second year second year in 2021 in the 2021 you will report 1.71 eps and with with this with this 1.71 you will report the comparative eps of 1.67 you will report the comparative eps of last year of 1. 6-7 per share. Now let me give you, in the end, let me give you a short summary of the class. What we studied, we studied the introduction of IS33, earning per share, EPS, basic EPS. Now, and what's the basic formula of EPS? The earnings, earnings divided by number of shares issued, earnings divided by the weighted average number of shares issued, simple. And we studied two different types of share issued in today. The first is full market price issue, full market price issue. And full market price issue means you issued new shares and you receive a bag full of money, bag full of money, the current share price, okay? So it's the share issue with resources, with resources. And whenever, whenever, whenever there is a full market price issue, whenever there is a full market price issue, we calculate weighted average number of shares, one thing. And the second thing, full market price issue are all full market price issue is always included from the date from the date when the shares are issued and what's the logic because we use we use the new resources we use the new cash from the date from the date these new shares are issued so when in the numerator we are taking few months profits effect so that's why in the denominator also few months comparison like with like that's it number second Whenever there is a bonus issue in the question, bonus issue is a free issue. So bonus issue are always adjusted at the beginning of the year. Bonus issue are bonus shares are always adjusted at the beginning of the year, from the beginning of the year. And we do it through bonus fraction. We do it through bonus fraction, okay? And one last thing, don't forget it. It, 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 it will help you in next class. Whenever, last thing, whenever there is a bonus issue in any accounting period, and you report comparative EPS with that accounting period, you restate, you restate last year EPS by taking the effect of this bonus issue last year. And how you do it? This is the formula. Restated EPS is calculated as last year normal EPS, last year normal EPS into one upon BF into the reciprocal of BF, okay? I hope you understood the class. We have discussed everything, even we repeated the things many times, okay? So that you can grasp things easily, okay? So now it's time to say bye. See you in the next class. Take care, take care.